All right. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Info Spot, Occupational Therapy for Student Veterans. My name is Olivia Briscoe. I'll be your host. This is Hannah Lentz. She's going to be my co-host. And we are occupational therapy students here at Cleveland State University. Our vlog topic is, do your senses make sense? Hey guys, I am, like, like Olivia said, Hannah Lentz. I am also a occupational therapy student here at Cleveland State. And thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to us today. Cool. All right. So to start out, what is occupational therapy? I wanted to introduce this idea because I feel like a lot of people don't know about it. Um, a formal definition would be that occupational therapists treat injured, ill, or disabled individuals through the therapeutic use of meaningful everyday activities, also known as occupations. They help individuals develop, recover, improve, as well as maintain the skills needed for daily living. A different way of putting would be asking this simple question, what matters to you? Instead of what, what's the matter with you? For an example, let's just say Hannah is my client and she came to see me because she was diagnosed with anxiety and has been having panic attacks at home and work that is neg negatively affecting her everyday life. So I would work with her to set goals. If her goal was reduce her panic attacks at work, I would work with her and give her tools and knowledge to help her stay relaxed at work. All right, now that sounds really cool, um, but what does that have to do with veterans or student veterans or this vlog? Well, Hannah, I'm happy you asked. Occupational therapists help veterans. Many veterans, whether they're students or not, can experience depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, and traumatic brain injuries, as well as as well as other ailments. But some underlying aspect that affects veterans is their sensory system. Their senses can get a little funky and cause additional stresses in their life that makes daily tasks more difficult. The main senses we are going to talk about are hearing, seeing, touching, tasting, and smelling. Uh, two other senses we will also touch on is proprioception, which means where your body is in its environment and pressure on the body and vestibular, which means your balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we threw a whole bunch of information at you guys uh, about what occupational therapy is, how we help veterans, and we kind of introduced the sensory system. So the main point of this vlog is to give you guys, the student veterans, knowledge about your senses to figure out if they're dysregulated to begin with, then we're going to give you suggestions of tools and methods to help regulate your senses. Then a little bit of why it's important to have regulated senses overall. <laughs> so to start out, <laughs> let me start by saying regulated senses pretty much means that you're able to organize yourself and react to different stimuli appropriately and being able to adapt to things going on in your own environment or space. Some signs, or just like normal behavior, would be being happy, feeling relaxed, or feelings of safety. Um, say you have good posture, normal breathing, your heart rate is normal, um, you have good energy, and you're able to keep good eye contact with others, you're attentive, you're able to focus on uh, whatever is going on, you're cooperative, and you have an overall good functioning level, so you're able to get your stuff done. And I think to visualize this better, uh, think of being at a grocery store close to the holidays, uh, there's music playing on the speakers, there are a lot of people around you, and there is a bright flashing light display by the entrance. And having normal sensory stimulation is you being able to acknowledge that these things are happening, but they're not affecting your ability to get your shopping done. It's a good example. Um, when things are not regulated, a person might react differently in that same situation. When a person can be overstimulated, um, that, needs, that means that they need to be calmed down in a way. So um, some ways to realize that you're overstimulated is that you might be angry or agitated. Um, 
you might be scared. You have a little fear in you. Um, you're panicked. You can be overwhelmed. Um, and you can kind of have mood swings possibly. Um, some physical behaviors would be, uh, you know, having being tense or fidgety, having increased breathing or increased heart rate. So you got sweaty palms or you're sweaty in general, being hyper, not being able to fall asleep. Um, you could be no, no, noisy, sorry, noisy, uh, disruptive, you'd be frustrated easily, um, extra attentive, so super vigilant, or um, um, you could be yelling or banging and throwing things around. Then the other side of how a person can act is um, being understimulated or needing to be more alert. Um, some signs can be um, someone who's understimulated under signs, which means that they need help being alert. Um, so for like emotional understimulated signs, they could include sadness, numbness, um, having flashbacks, um, being suicidal or being discouraged. Um, for physical understimulated signs, um, those could be like low energy, a slouched posture or being excessively tired or um, sleeping um, more than usual. Um, then some behavioral signs in terms of someone being understimulated could be unusual quietness, uh, a lack of interest in things that they used to like, um, being with John or um, potentially self-harming behaviors. Now the question is, do you experience any of these? Take a second, which ones? I know we threw a lot at you, but do you think you're understimulated or overstimulated? And once you realize that, think to, the thing to think about is when when do you feel over or understimulated? Is it in the grocery store? It might be loud noises, or it might be flashing lights, or a bunch of people around. At school, it might be too bright or too dark in the classroom which causes you to have difficulties focusing on the lecture being taught. So these would be called triggers. Um, so some other triggers that uh, could trigger you <laughs> um, would be certain materials and clothing, which would be uh, your tactile sense being affected um, or a weird texture of food or um, a different taste in your mouth than what it should be. Um, being touched, um, it being too dark. Um, certain times of the day can be a trigger with certain places. Talking about certain topics are super uncomfortable for a lot of people. Um, unexpected visits, uh, different changes too rapidly. Um, scary thoughts, nightmares, not being able to fall asleep can trigger someone or just being bored, humiliated, ignored, feeling isolated and then having flashbacks or feeling out of control. All right, so I know that's a lot of information, but we're in the home stretch. Uh, we got a little bit more to talk about, but after figuring out that you need to be calmed down or you need to be more alert, you can realize some of the triggers you might have by what we kind of said, but um, to be more proactive and tackle these sensory issues, we're now going to list a few things that you can use um, to help. <laughs> All right, so if you're still listening and watching this wonderful vlog, uh, take out a pen or pencil and a piece of paper or pull up the notes on your phone to jot down ideas that you might like to try in the future. So for things that can help, we're gonna break it down into each of the senses that we mentioned earlier. So for auditory, which is also your ears, hearing. Um, if you need to calm down, I know I do this myself. I go on YouTube and I listen to like meditation or like calming music videos. They last forever. There's like ones that last eight hours. So you can just sleep through it all night. Um, I have Spotify on my phone, which if you don't know is an app with uh, music on it or like Apple Music or literally there's a bunch of other ones like Amazon or Google, whatever. Um, there's nature sounds you can listen to. And if it's too loud or noisy, you can have noise canceling earbuds or earphones. 
um, sitting in silence might help or hearing the voice of a loved one. So if you're overwhelmed, just call somebody that you like or you want to talk to. Um, also white noise, which is like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, if you need to be more alert, um, I listen to like EDM or like a workout playlist on my Spotify. Pumps me up. I don't know about you guys, but gets me going. Also, I play music. Um, so, but a lot of uh, sensory journals and stuff like that, they say if you like whistle or you hum or you make music yourself, and if you're engaged in music, then it's able to wake you up. All right, so let's talk about taste. So some alerting uh, tastes could be like chewing minty gum, uh, sour or chewy candy, um, certain beverages, like you can compare the hot beverages or cold beverages. Cold typically breaks me up. Um, hot is typically calming. So some people like drinking cold water in the morning to kind of like get them up and going in the morning. Whereas some people might like drinking hot coffee because that could be a nice way to ease them um, into their day. Um, but it could be, again, different for each person just depending on what their preference is. Um, lemonade or carbonated beverages could also um, be good to help you become more alert in terms of different taste sensations, um, as well as maybe like tea, uh, like I said before, like coffee, water, or even chewing on ice could um, kind of alert you in terms of your senses. For seeing, um, you see a lot, I think you see um, being overstimulated more common in this, uh, this sense. But if you need to be more alert, um, you can have brighter lights that are flashing. I know I have a really bright light right now, right? Um, but there's light therapy. Um, it's like a little like box you can buy and it's just a super bright light and it wakes people up in the morning. <laughs> um, you can use bright colored post-its and highlighters for your notes um, or just having the brightness up on your phone if you're reading something or doing something on there. To help you calm down, like I said, I think this is more common, but um, I know a veteran myself who has tinted glasses. They're blue because um, really super bright light really affects him. So having that blue calming tone in his glasses at all times, it helps quite a bit. Um, but you can have the blue light glasses if you're staring at your computer all day, which a lot of us are doing that. Um, you can turn the brightness down on your phone. Or if you just need to see something calming, um, you can go on YouTube or have like one of those Roku uh, like screensavers of like an aquarium fish swimming on your screen, you know, or um, just like pans of like mountains and oceans and like lava lamps. Like I got a few things going, but um, it also helps if you look through, you know, family photo albums just for, um, you know, good memories or just reading a book that can be calming as well. Oh, I'm the next one. <laughs> uh, to go into smell, um, I have a few things here. Uh, essential oils are great. Um, different smells can uh, affect you in different ways. Um, so usually citrus is uh, incorporated to more energy, whereas like lavender or vanilla is more calming. Uh, you can have scented candles. I have a eucalyptus one right here, clearance, of course. Uh, there's <laughs> incense or um, just making teas or any kinds of food in your kitchen can have different um, stimulation. So I don't know, I really like cookies. I love the smell of cookies in my house, but I shouldn't be making them that much. So, you know, as well. <laughs> Uh, you can use different soaps as well in the shower, like those bath bombs. Um, the smell's going to help with that too, but. Yeah, Olivia, I definitely understand you with the cookies there, especially around the holidays. <laughs> kind of tempting. <laughs> uh, um, yes, yeah, so those are great examples for like taste and smell. Um, going on to tactile, uh, it could be maybe like petting an animal, um, such as like a dog or a cat. Um, they could be calming or they could be alerting. It depends on what your animal is or 
what kind of animal you have, maybe the different personalities could be calming or alerting. I feel like dogs kind of need more, even more alerting. Dogs or cats maybe sometimes more calming. Um, but again, again, I know some cats that are not very calming and some dogs that are not very alert. So again, it depends. Um, could be clapping your hands. That could be alerting. If you go to like a sporting event or some concert, people clapping, um, that could really kind of be like a really strong tactile sensation or um, then if you, or yeah, if you were, yeah, clapping your hands could be a strong tactile sensation, not hearing it, because that, that can also be alertive, but you know, we're talking about tactile right now. It's different. <laughs> uh, maybe another tactile sensation could be snapping a rubber band on your wrist. That would hurt a little bit, maybe be a little bit softer with it. Um, a, hot, a cold or hot shower could be alerting, um, a vibration of like a stuffed animal or pillow, an ice bag or a heating pad, um, fidgets or like stress balls um, could also be like, helpful um, in terms of just calming you down, um, typically more of a calming activity. Um, then also you can get a gel pack or a bag with ice or water to swish around, um, hand lotion, or like a Rubik's cube, or even like a soft blanket, um, or like a weighted blanket, or like a fabric to um, rub. So for proprioceptive, I know this is kind of one of the weirder senses that a lot of people might not know about, but it's um, pressure on your joints or um, just pressure on the on your skin, as well as uh, where you are in your environment. It's known as body awareness. Um, so a lot of things, me personally, especially in the wintertime, I wear a hat always. I think it's really weird that I'm not wearing one now. Um, I refer to it as a head hug. Um, so like my head, I don't know, I just feel way more calmer when I'm wearing a hat than when I'm not. Kind of gives me like a little security blanket. Um, but some people, they do the same thing with clothes. So if you wear tighter clothes, or if that bothers you, wear baggier clothes. Um, me, myself, I have a weighted blanket. That's also a thing you could look into. Uh, they're at a lot of regular stores now, like Target and Walmart, whatever. But um, um, a sense of pressure on your joints. Uh, some simple things you can do is any kind of exercise, like jogging or even yoga. Um, to go into, this kind of like leads into my next point, but there's a lot of different activities that help these different senses. Um, all at once, kind of, it can be. Um, so meditation, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit later, but exercise in general, say you'd go on a run, but you could do it on a treadmill where there's not that much other stimulation besides proprioceptive or tactile on the track. But, um, but if you do it in nature, if you go on a hike, then you also get, you know, seeing and hearing and, you know, smelling nature around you, which can also be stimulating. Um, some soothing activities could be doing a puzzle, coloring, or just any kind of art project or doing a crossword. Like I said before, making music, that always helps me. Um, reading, you know, talking to other people, cleaning, um, writing in a journal, like I said, exercising or just doing any kind of sports. And one other thing we talked about was vestibular sensory stimulation and that being your balance. So one thing that we touch on is um, rocking chairs and swinging and swings. Um, so people who have hammocks, they kind of benefit from this. So maybe get a hammock. <laughs> All right, so with these suggestions, it's up to you to figure out what works best and what exactly you need, because again, each person's different. Um, something could help wake someone while another thing could um, be calming for that person. Um, so then, so again, it could be different depending on um, kind of what, whether you're like understimulated or overstimulated depending on different senses. There's a lot of trial and error to figure out um, what can help in stressful situations. But once you kind of know some of these things, um, and you can, you can uh, see a real big dramatic change um, when you're actually able to you know, control or prevent being overwhelmed, possibly agitated, 
or it can help you be more alert with using some of these uh, um, examples. And it is good to have something or a few things with you when you think you might get overwhelmed or need more energy. Um, some examples are like carrying mint gum and a fidget toy with you to a, like a boring lecture or a class that you don't typically enjoy. Um, or maybe like wearing earbuds when walking down a busy street where you know cars and like, people might be loud. Another, str another strategy that might come in handy is having a safe sensory environment to go to when you need it. This could be, this could be being able to sit down in a break room at work or going outside to calm your nerves. It could be one corner in your room in your house where you can wrap up in a blanket or do some kind of exercise. It could be having a family member or a loved one near you when you need it. Um, there, I do want to mention there is a sensory modulation room at the Cleveland State's Veteran Center. So instead of creating in your own environment, you could also go to this room um, and use some of the items that we talked about before. So how can this help with student veterans? Good question. As a student, um, it's easy to get overwhelmed by so much going on all at once, especially nowadays. Um, and especially when you have a lot of extra triggers from past experiences. The sensory tips we talked about and all the information that we've said have, can be provided and translated um, into any kind of situation. If you get overwhelmed at a grocery store or in a lecture hall, or just trying to study for an exam, hanging out with friends possibly, um, triggers can happen unexpectedly. But with this background knowledge and having a fidget or gum in your back pocket to help you relax, this might be able to make a huge difference and make life a little bit more bearable for you. One big thing I do wanna save or one thing I, I saved until the very end here um, is when people get overwhelmed or sleepy for that matter, uh, breathing can be alerting or calming. Breathing is really important in times of crisis. Um, there's apps in an app store that help with breathing, mindfulness and meditation called Calm or Headspace that um, some people have heard of, but you have to pay for a subscription to. I found a few other ones that are free. One's called Oak, like the wood. Another one's called Lull, which is L-U-L-L. -L -L. Another one is called Non, which is just N-O-N. Um, so I also have a short guided breathing meditation that I'll read after these closing remarks. I greatly appreciate Hannah helping me talk for this long. And I thank all the people watching this vlog. And hopefully it was interesting and you made it till the end <laughs> and you got some cool information and strategies that you can use to help with school and other aspects of your life. The disclaimer of this video is the information presented today is meant to give you some ideas for healthy options for managing sensory modulation. It is not meant to replace your currently prescribed medical regimen. Please contact your physician or healthcare provider with any questions or before starting any new health promoting practices. This is the info spot, occupational therapy for student veterans. Our vlog topic was do your senses make sense? And I am Hannah Lentz. And I am Olivia Briscoe. <laughs> All right. So for our breathing meditation. I have to calm down myself for this. Hmm. All right. I want you to close your eyes. Place one hand on your belly and one hand on your chest. Begin to feel your chest rise and fall. Begin to feel the belly rise and fall. Inhale. 
and exhale. Continue with your natural breath, feeling the air enter through your nostrils, then exit through your nostrils. Continue to fill your breath. On the next inhale, feel the belly rise. Then your ribs expand. And finally, your chest lift. Coming to the top of the breath, below your throat. On the exhale, the breath leaves the chest. Your ribs fall and your belly contracts. Continue with this breath, feeling all three parts of the breath and think to yourself, belly, ribs, chest, belly, ribs, chest. Repeat this breath three more times. With the third exhale, begin to feel the breath as a wave coming up from the belly and rising to the top of the breath beneath your throat. Hold this breath for two counts, then let the breath go in, a wave from the chest out the belly. Continue with this wave-like breath. Rolling in and up, then counting to two, and rolling out like a tide. Feel the fluidity of the breath. Feel the complete cycle of the breath. Focus only on the breath. Finish a final cycle of this breath. And after the complete exhale, return to your natural breath. Feel the calmness in your breath. Feel ease and steadiness. When you're ready, open your eyes. We are back. As I said before, this is the info spot. This is Do Your Senses Make Sense? I'm Olivia Briscoe. This is Hannah Lenz. <laughs> and we are signing off. Thank you so much for listening, guys.